Good evening, everyone. It is the Sean the Baptist Show, and I'm live from St. Patrick Catholic Church in Kansas City, Kansas, here tonight. Wasn't sure if I was going to do a live show tonight, honestly. We uh, were a little late getting started tonight because we, we just finished recording uh, Father Mark Murtis, the pastor here, doing Mass. So we, we are posting uh, on our, our Facebook page, and for the Masses, copying it over to YouTube. So we're... We're using the uh, distribution methods to get the, the mass out there. So that's what I was doing here. And uh, so we're a little late getting started tonight, but uh, good to be with you on the, the Sean the Baptist show tonight. Again, it's a, a one-man show. So I am the, uh, the producer, the director, the, the host, and um, normally the main guest. So uh, bear with me as I, I figure out a little bit more each time I do it. All right? Well, let's start with a prayer tonight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, we, we thank you uh, in the midst of this, this time of, of stress and pandemic that you are still with us. As Pope Francis told us yesterday, we are all in the same boat and you are in the boat with us. So we need not be afraid. Where is your faith, he asks us. And so we know that uh, our faith is weak at times. Our, our faith struggles. We have temptations and difficulties. And at many times we ask ourselves the same question, where is our faith? Didn't we have more faith than this? Well, I think uh, tonight we ask you, Lord, just be with us and let us know that uh, although it might seem like you would be asleep, that you are with us, you are on the boat with us, and we are in this boat together. So let's make this a time of drawing close in community with our brothers and sisters and with you. We ask you to bless our show tonight in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. John the Baptist, pray for us. All right, well, uh, I see that we... We do have some people uh, on with us uh, tonight, so happy to see that. And uh, I will be looking for your comments and your questions, uh, because after all, that's really why you do a, a live show in, in the first place. Uh, if I just wanted to put out a little 30-minute video each day, I could certainly do that more easily than trying to uh, do all this live. But um, there is something to be said for... People have commented when, when they do comment, even after the show especially, that they really um, value this chance to kind of be together. And at least as I'm doing this, I'm imagining you uh, sitting around your, your living room, perhaps after dinner, maybe you've just prayed the rosary or you're going to pray the rosary, and you are checking out the Sean the Baptist show. And maybe just uh, give you something to talk about each day. I don't know, but uh, I'm happy to be here joining with you and, and do hope that uh, this is of, of value and of, of use to some people, okay? All right. Well, I see we've got uh, Teresa Smith, Patrick Callahan, Katie Gates. So these are, these are some of the normal folks that join the Sean the Baptist show. So, um, you know, I didn't put out the, the little pre-announcement today. When I go to schedule a live event, it lets me put out a little, hey, uh, Sean the Baptist is planning to go live at. I don't know if that's helpful or not, so uh, maybe you can let me know about that. Um, and, uh, that'll let me know how I'm, I'm reaching people and, and what, uh, various means of communication people are using. I have started that, uh, I figured out that I do have enough, uh, processing power, uh, in my computer that I can both stream live and, uh, record it at the same time. And I'm, I'm recording it in a, a little bit higher definition video and I'll put that on YouTube when we're done. So you can go to Sean the Baptist on YouTube as well. Uh, I'm working on the, the links there. It's Sean the Baptist video on, on YouTube. But you can get all of that, my Facebook page, my YouTube channel, everything at seanthebaptist.org. So check it out there. That's where all my homilies live. That's how you can subscribe to the podcast. Anyway, you want to keep in touch with me, it's seanthebaptist.org. If you've got questions, you can send them to Father Sean at seanthebaptist.org. That's F-R-S-H-A-W-N at seanthebaptist.org. All right, I see we've got uh, a number of uh, the folks on from St. Patrick's tonight. One of the other things I'm doing here on uh, Facebook is I am at the same time streaming live uh, to my own page, Sean the Baptist, on Facebook, and I am, I am also uh, streaming live to the St. Patrick Parish page. So I, I see people on both. So... Uh, I see the people on the Sean the Baptist site, and uh, my stats so far show me that uh, more people tune in from Sean the Baptist, uh, but people stay longer from St. Patrick's. So 
uh, maybe that means the John the Baptist crowd, which includes a lot of my non-Catholic friends and and people who are not St. Patrick people for, for sure. So uh, welcome to all those who are, are joining tonight uh, who are not Catholic and are just checking things out. You happen to see that Sean the Baptist was live and you jumped on. Uh, tonight is just a little chance to kind of touch base with everyone and uh, see how people are doing a little bit. And uh, thanks to uh, Patrick there for, for letting me know that uh, that you prayed the rosary outside with the kids, and uh, we're listening as we sort Legos before dinner. Ah, five-year-old loves it. Well, I'm popular with five-year-olds, so there's that. Um, glad that I have my target audience. I don't know how YouTube captures the stats on that, but uh, why not? Five-year-olds is, is a, I think, an underserved demographic there. So do uh, chime in if you have your, your questions tonight. Um, so one thing that I kind of had on, on my mind a little bit to, uh, to talk about uh, would be the, the fact that uh, if we were coming to Mass tonight, uh, in, in fact, we would be in a lot of churches noticing that, in fact, the, uh, the statues had all been covered in, in purple um, and, and, and uh, that uh, things were... All of a sudden, there's a lot of purple veils over statues and, and images and, and things. Um, this is because, as of this evening at Vespers, we, we enter a, a new kind of period in the liturgical year. Now, at least in the, the current uh, calendar that we have, this is still Lent. And uh, in the what is called the Novus Ordo, if you hear me use that term a lot, this refers to, uh, literally means in Latin, the New Order. And so a lot of things changed in the liturgy at the time of Vatican II in 1963 uh, and really kind of hitting us here in the United States in the 70s. So the Novus Ordo is the, the new order of Mass uh, after Vatican II. And so in that, the, the season of Lent goes all the way up until evening of Holy Thursday, so another week and a half. But in the uh, traditional calendar, so what is called the Vedas Ordo or the, the Old Mass or the traditional Latin Mass, TLM, uh, it's not only a Mass, it has its own calendar. So the, the calendar as it existed in 1962, beginning with this evening, there's actually a little instruction that says Lent ends and the season of Passion Tide begins. Now, at least that word should be a little bit familiar, Passion Tide. We hear the word passion in it and Tide kind of reminds us of not washing our clothes, but of a, a season. So Christmas tide, Easter tide, Passion tide. It's the time of the Passion, literally. And so I, I do like this that uh, in the in the extraordinary form, the old calendar, you get a full two weeks of okay. Now it's time to to hone in and, and focus uh, our intensify our our fasting and our penitential acts. And, and really get ready more for the, uh, the celebration of the, the most important events. Um, this is kind of a recurring theme, I find, uh, in the, the old calendar. I, I, of course, didn't leave before the Second Vatican Council. This is all stuff I've, I've come to later in life. But um, there's, there's a lot more emphasis on preparation, I think, uh, in the old calendar. For instance, uh, every major feast day like the big feast, that they would have a vigil. Now, we think of vigil like, oh, it's a holy day and I have to go to Mass, so I'll, I'll get it out of the way, and, you know, the night before. You know, a vigil uh, in the, the traditional calendar was actually an entire day of not celebrating, but fasting and prayer preparing for the, the feast that would come the next day. So some of the, the major celebrations like Saints Peter and Paul, Saint John the Baptist, these things, the assumption, they had proper vigils, and it was all day. So the, the priest that day would wear purple for the mass in the morning, and the entire day was a, a vigil, which literally means keeping watch to prepare. And, and unlike we do today, like, oh, Ash Wednesday's coming, it's a fast day, we'll prepare on Mardi Gras by going crazy. Uh, that, that's not how it worked uh, in the old calendar. And I say old, but it's, it's used right now. Anyone who celebrates the... Uh, Extraordinary form of traditional Latin Mass uses that calendar, so I don't mean to disparage it by calling old. I mean uh, old in the sense of reverence, reverence, revered, like your grandparents, uh, but still very much with us. So shout out to grandparents, especially those we can't visit right now. 
uh, but it gives us a chance to prepare. So that's one example of, of how the, the old calendar, I think, does a good job of helping us prepare to celebrate. Uh, we also talked a little bit about at the beginning of Lent. Okay, we, we think in the, the new calendar, in the Novus Ordo calendar, Lent starts on Ash Wednesday, uh, which is true in the old calendar too, but there is a preseason. You know, we know preseason for the NFL. Um, the games don't really count, but it kind of tells us a little something. There's a pre-Lent in the traditional calendar called the season of Septuagesima, which means the 70 days, because it's roughly 70 days before Passover. The next Sunday is Sexamagesima, and then Quinquagesima. So 60, 50, and then in almost every other language but English, Lent is not called some version of spring like Lent. It's called the 40 days, Quaresma, uh, for instance, Quadragesima in Latin. So uh, there's that little two-week, two-and-a-half-week period of Septuagesima, pre-Lent, to prepare for Lent. And then finally, the, the whole point of this tangent into preparation is that in the Extraordinary Form calendar, we now enter what is called the season of Passion Tide. It's kind of a week-and-a-half of preparation for the Passion. They're like, gosh, why do we need that much? Well, you know, there used to be more strict rules like certain levels of fasting like you might be able to have butter or cheese maybe but then maybe you could have some meat but then maybe during passion tide that the fasting rules got more strict and and maybe people would move to just bread and water for the last two weeks to prepare whatever you want to do and there, there are no uh there are no laws on the books right now that say you've got to make some changes because it's passion tide um it might be a, a chance for for us to say all right um what do we need to change because it's it's getting close to the celebration of the Lord's Passion? You know, I, I found this this week that, um, gosh, with, with the pandemic and everything, I, I kind of lose track of time. I, I, I don't know if you found that. Now you're like, oh my gosh, it's just kids everywhere because we're, we're homeschooling and we're working from home and it's, it's craziness. Uh, it's a little bit like that right now for, for the priest as well. Um, a little bit of craziness and that we're, we're trying to figure out cameras. And I, you know, I've actually heard less from my priest friends lately. And I text them like, you know, people I would normally get to, together with to, to go to breakfast or lunch. Of course, restaurants are closed, so I don't do that. But they'll be like, hey, man, I'm, I'm busy. I'm really busy. I'm figuring out all the video stuff. I'm like, whoa, okay. Uh, so these uh, last two weeks, I think, have been a little bit of an exercise in, okay, let's figure out how to live pandemic time, shut down. Which, which, by the way, I, happy Saturday in the second week of pandemic time. Uh, that's my liturgical designation for this time. Uh, so we've been figuring out, I think, how do we live in pandemic time, maybe for the last two weeks. I'm hoping that, that maybe next week, I don't know, things will start to settle in a little bit. I, I, I hope so. But um, maybe it's time for us to kind of check ourselves and say, all right, Easter is coming. And, and the sad thing. One of the greatest sufferings will be that we, we can't gather together for Easter. I, I don't even, I, I don't have words to describe what that will be like. Uh, I'm, I'm going to celebrate Easter Mass by myself? With, with me and Father Mark and Father Michael, probably? I, I don't know. I mean, we, haven't, we haven't even figured that out yet. But Easter is coming. And, you know, that first Good Friday, they didn't even know Easter was coming. They should have. Jesus told them many times, on the third day I will rise again. They didn't seem to get that. But we we know Easter is going to come, uh, whether or not we can go to our church or not. Um, so I think we need to take seriously these, these last two weeks. And so Passion Tide, uh, as it begins this evening, is a good kind of excuse for us as families to say, all right, let, let's gather around the family dinner table and say, all right, these last two weeks have been crazy. Um what have we been doing that maybe we want to change and do differently for the next two weeks as we get ready for Easter? What, what are we doing well that, that we want to keep doing? Maybe you started praying the rosary together. Maybe you started reading the, the scripture together. Um, all those things. Maybe it's time to kind of regroup a little bit. That's what, that's what uh, Passion Tide does for the church in the calendar. It kind of says, all right, we've been fasting. We, we've been doing all kinds of crazy penances and reflecting and doing things. As St. As Paul tells us, what you've been doing good. Keep doing it and do it all the more. So God's kind of given us a chance here to say, all right, let's even turn it up a notch. Two weeks, reset, Easter is coming. Where are we doing good? Where do we need to do that all the more? And, and where do we need to make changes? So Passion Tide is here. Uh, in, in the current calendar, you'll notice that there is no difference on, on this 
uh, Sunday uh, in the, the Mass exactly because we celebrate next Sunday as Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. So it's not Passion Sunday and Palm Sunday separately. Uh, that It's all combined now. But the one thing you would notice differently is if you came to a lot of our churches tonight, you would have seen purple veils covering all the statues. Now, the reason for that, people are like, why the purple veils? All right, here's the deal. Uh, there, there are a couple different uh, traditions as to maybe how this came about. Why do we cover statues beginning on the, the fifth Sunday of Lent? Um, well, there's a tradition in Germany in which uh, on this day we, they would actually uh, cover the entire sanctuary with a kind of purple curtain that would remain there until the reading of the gospel and, and Holy Week of the veil of the temple being torn in two. Um, the, the more typical explanation for this, though, comes from the gospel that would be read uh, today at Mass uh, on, on Saturday before Passion Tide. And so I'll, I'll, I'll just read that with, with you now. This is from the Gospel of John, the 8th chapter, verse 51 and following. We'll get it uh, in the Novus Ordo on Thursday of Holy Week, I, or uh, Thursday of this upcoming week, I believe. So this is Gospel of St. John. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you're possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, or the prophets who died? What do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. You do not know Him, but I know Him. And if I should say that I do not know Him, I would be, like you, a liar. But I do know Him, and I keep His word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. All right. I don't know if you picked up on it. It's a little bit hidden there, pun intended. Uh, Jesus hid himself and went out. That's the Gospel of that we would read and on this day. And so in order to intensify a little bit our, our fasting and, and prayer even, statues would be veiled in purple to hide them from our eyes. Just as at the end of this gospel, it says Jesus hid. Uh, interesting story I was reading that the, you know, the church fathers, St. Augustine, actually taught that when, when Jesus hid and he went out of this crowd, that they, Augustine says he actually became invisible. Like, you know, that's his superpower at that moment. I, th- I, we don't have to believe that. I mean, that's a, that's a private uh, opinion, but I don't know, that's kind of cool. I'd never really thought of it that way. Um, and, and yet there's a pretty decent father of the church telling us that the reason Jesus was able to walk away from their midst uh, and go away unharmed without being stoned is was because when it says he hid himself, he, he made himself invisible. So there's something for your, your meditation. Uh, I know I'm going to pray about that tonight before I go to bed and think, what would it be like for Jesus to just, you know, be there and then and just disappear? And he's gone. It's kind of like Frodo, you know, in, in the Lord of the Rings. He puts on the ring and he's he's gone. Um, what an interesting kind of thought. But anyway, so that's that little bit on the end. He hid himself and went away. Some people will say, well, that's, that's why we cover the statues. And, okay, maybe. Here is really the, the way, I think, to, to look at that better. Um, not, not just that, you know, hey, we, we cover statues because the scripture or whatever. Now, it's, it's what I was talking about earlier with this intensifying of our fasting. Okay, think of all the things we, we've given up. I mean, and we, we do this, uh, as I've said, to, to train our will so that we can, we can give up littler things that might be good, like chocolate or TV or, or whatever, so that it strengthens our will. 
And we can then learn at Easter to say the, the big no to Satan and yes to God in our, our baptismal promises. So that that's part of it. But just uh, as Catholics, we know that we experience things in our, our bodies as well as just our heads. Um, so all during Lent, we've been trying to fast and, and get rid of some things to, to make room for God. But I noticed as a Catholic that just in doing that, you know, it, it feels like Lent. You know, we feel it in our bodies. Like I'm, I'm fasting, I'm giving up things. And, you know, maybe we even, we, we feel a little bit of things being taken away, but maybe we feel ourselves getting stronger. I, I think covering all the statues, it, it gives us a chance to, to feel the intensity of the, the coming of the, the specialness of these last two weeks. To say, all right, the, the most important events in history are ones that we're, we're getting ready to celebrate again. Uh, so we got to up our game. Uh, we need to increase our fasting. And so we, we fast even from the beautiful images. You know, we, 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 we say all the time, normally in Lent, we don't take away holy water. You don't take away good things. So we need holy water during Lent. And, you know, you, you can come to the church and, and get it. Holy water is still available in a little kettle. But, um, you know, people sometimes wanted to take the holy water away at Lent to say, oh, we're like in the desert. Um, no, we don't fast from holy things. But... I guess the, the covering of the statues is, it's a little bit of an exception to that. Um, in fact, I was talking about the, uh, the uh, extraordinary form liturgy in the traditional calendar. In Passion Tide, lots of things are kind of taken away. Like all the time you end up saying like the, the glory be to the Father and, and things like that. Um, you don't. Uh, during Passion Tide, a lot of those things go away. And you strip things away, even from the liturgy. And so I think all of us can relate that uh, during this pandemic, all of us are feeling what it's like to have some things stripped away. I mean, think about all the things we've had to go through that we never would have thought we'd had to give up. You know, we, we've been stripped of the ability to be together with our family. So many people, like, this is the longest I've ever been without seeing my, my grandparents or my grandkids or whatever it is stripped away we we feel that it's it's hard we we've been stripped away of our you know our, our chance to go to work you know how often we were like ah, i gotta go to work okay well well now we can't go we don't get to see our, our co-workers we're working from home a lot of us okay that that's a, a stripping away of of things that we just took for granted the the ability to go to a movie uh to, to go to a restaurant you know all this taken away taken away um the church does that on purpose every year during lent we we take away certain foods and now in passion tide the last two weeks we we take away and strip away even some of the the good holy things like the beautiful images because while they might remind us of good and holy things they, they even in that dazzle our eyes a little bit and we might even look at a crucifix and say isn't that beautiful and, and admire the artist and so the, the strangest thing for me is that we cover crosses. We, we cover crosses during Passion Tide. Now, why do that? You know, because we're, we're preparing to, to celebrate the passion of Jesus. If we want to focus more intently on the, the passion death of Jesus, wouldn't a crucifix be a good thing? Yeah. But here's the, the kind of movement of the church. We are preparing to, to celebrate the Lord's passion in the most solemn way we have in the church's liturgy on Good Friday. So interesting note in the, uh, the instructions for mass, all the, the statues and the images and everything that get covered stay covered until the Easter vigil, except crosses. The crosses are unveiled on Good Friday. Uh, the way the church envisions this is that the, the cross on the altar, so you can think of the traditional altar with the, the cross and then candles, you know, in front of it, that cross would be veiled tonight. And then that very cross would be unveiled on Good Friday and everyone would, would reverence it. So to some extent, the, the taking away of even the, the images of the crosses prepares us for it to be revealed in a, a much greater way on Good Friday. So our, our interior focus on the cross should increase, even while our, our visual is somewhat uh, stripped away over these, these last two weeks of Lent. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to take a, a moment here to look and, and see about the, the questions. Uh, Dave Strait has a question. Thanks for doing this. I have a question about the Eucharist. I know we receive full salvation through either species, but it's that the, is that the same as saying Jesus' body and blood are present in both species? Great. Uh, good question, David. Um, so what he's talking about here is what is technically called in Catholic speak, so, hey, let's face it, if you're watching the Sean the Baptist show at 7 o'clock on a Saturday evening, you're super Catholic, pretty much. So you can handle this, all right? The, the word that describes this is called concomitance, concomitance. What it means is that with the substance of either what looks like bread or what looks like wine, both contain the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus in his entirety, okay? Because Jesus' body and blood can, can no longer be separated. That happened on Good Friday, on Calvary. His body and blood were separated and he died. That is no longer possible. Jesus, when he is there, is the entire Jesus, the entire substance of the Godhead. So when I receive the sacred host and just the, the host alone, I receive not just the body of Christ, but also the blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. The whole Christ, in other words. Christ is not divided in that way. So body, blood, soul, and divinity, I, I receive it all. Even though ritually, when we receive from the bread, what looks like bread, we are ritually kind of representing that time at the Last Supper when Jesus first took bread, and then he took the cup, the chalice, Okay, that's a, a ritual presentation, but the, the sacramental reality of what's going on, if I could put it that way, is that, in fact, the whole Jesus, and we say body, blood, soul, and divinity, those four things to, to kind of cover it, but it's everything. The, the whole Jesus. The Eucharist is Jesus. I mean, if there's one thing that we, we need to get into our heads, um, and maybe in a strange way being away from Mass will help us do that, um, the Eucharist is Jesus. And uh, now that we're fasting, even from the Eucharist, heaven forbid that we're in such times, but we're fasting even from the Eucharist, maybe that will draw our heart to that as well. So you receive from the host, you receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. You receive from the chalice, what looks like wine, but it's the blood of Christ. It is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, the whole Jesus. So when you receive from the chalice, do you also receive the body of Christ? Yes. When you receive from the host, do you also receive the blood of Christ? Yes, along with his soul and divinity. That means that God dwells within you. Now, this is an important point, concomitance, that funny word, because it means, like, let's say I'm, a, I'm allergic to wheat or gluten or, or something. Um, well, you, you can receive from a, a low-gluten host. We have that option. But if we're distributed under both species, and, and kudos to David for using the right language, species is kind of the word we refer to to say, uh, what looks like bread and what, what looks like wine. Those are the two species of the, the Eucharist. But if, say, you're allergic to wheat and can't receive it, you could receive just from the chalice to receive the precious blood and you receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the whole Jesus. So the important thing there is for people who are like, uh, you know, gluten intolerant, you receive the whole Jesus and you miss out on nothing if you receive just from the chalice. In the same way, if you receive just the host, you receive the whole Jesus. You, you miss out on nothing. And that's that's really important for us to, to keep in mind. We've seen in pandemic time, before everything got shut down, a lot of places they stopped distributing from the chalice. I've heard people be like, well, it's the blood of Christ, so surely God will protect us and it doesn't spread germs. Okay, not theologically accurate, all right? Uh, there's that, that bit from Thomas Aquinas about substance and accidents, okay? The substance... But, really is changes okay so that what's in the chalice really is the blood of christ body blood soul and divinity but the accidents in other words all of the worldly visible experimental anything tangible about it remains so the tangible ability of a a cup uh to be contaminated with germs uh i, I think that remains i mean sacramentally theologically we'd have to say Definitely, the, there's nothing special about the chalice after the, the precious blood is consecrated. 
uh, other than it, it holds the precious blood, but it doesn't like get magic powers that it repels coronavirus now. Uh, so we, we do need to be careful with the accidental properties uh, of the what looks like bread and wine. But we know that whether we receive from either one, it's the body, blood, soul, and divinity, the whole Christ. And uh, most people maybe don't realize that in, in the history of the church, it's been very rare that we distribute from the chalice anyway. Uh, just think about it. Uh, who, who can afford often to have that much wine uh, available to consecrate? And it, it becomes difficult. And, you know, the instructions for Mass actually assume that you don't distribute from the chalice. And it gives certain special feasts on which you could do it. Um, now we have permission to do it all the time. But uh, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind, that reception from the chalice by everyone it is actually pretty rare in the history of the church. So yes, Jesus is is present. So Nancy uh, thanks me for that. And I, I hope the, that that was able to, to be uh, explained there. Speaking of incredible amounts of wine. Okay, I'll, I'll maybe leave you with this tonight and we'll... Uh, We'll talk about it more in the future, but um, I've been following. Uh, well, I, I guess what they're—it's called the Chosen. Okay, some of you might have seen this online. It's uh, the first ever TV miniseries, I guess they're calling it, about the life of Jesus. But but it's all only online, and it's all crowdfunded. So I mean, for those of you that don't know the the crowdfunding stuff, this means like they got no budget except this is how much we think it's going to cost, and then they they put out. Um, you know, like on Kickstarter, kind of, hey, give us some money, and when we get enough, we'll hire some actors, we'll buy some cameras, and we'll, we'll do this. Well, they've done it. They've created, like, the first eight episodes, and it is amazing. But what got me thinking of that is, like, this morning, I watched episode five, The, the Wedding Feast of Cana. Now, I, as, a, as a priest and someone who prays, you know, a, a lot, and I like to meditate and picture myself in the scene, I've never seen anything like this, this Chosen series. Um... It's, it's not like somewhere they take incredible liberties, like, oh my goodness, uh, you know, last temptation of Christ. They are, are Jesus and Mary Magdalene a thing? You know, no, nothing like that. But I have never pictured like the, the wedding of Cana exactly in, in this way. And it's just, it fleshes out so many of like those little details that you, you'd love to think about in your prayer. What was, what was on Mary's face? And what was on Jesus's face? And I, I love it. At the end of this, everybody is just excited that there's wine and that there's happiness. And then Mary looks at Jesus. Jesus looks at Mary. And it's just like, yeah, good job, son. Like, thanks, mom. You know, it's, it's just great. I, I, I encourage you, if you're looking for something new to, to add to your playbook for the Passion Tide, check out The Chosen. It's via app on uh, Android or um, Apple. Or you can you can watch it online, and I think I think the deal is, you can get like the first four episodes, and then that kickstarting part of it, the way they've got it set up, you actually pay it forward. So you pay for someone else to watch the first four seasons, and then by doing that, you get access to the the last four uh, episodes. So check that out. I think I saw that they might have even made the whole first season free uh, because of the pandemic. So check that out. It's called The Chosen. Uh, you can search for that. All right, a quick look at the questions. It looks like I have covered everybody's questions tonight. Um, thanks to, oh, I see Tanya Carpenter on there. I helped her with her spiritual journal there. Praise God for that. Um, if you're looking for something to pray about, journal about, check out The Chosen and, and maybe imagine it, look at it uh, in your mind, and then you know do that maybe as a family. And then each of you come back together and say, okay, what, what did you get from that? The priests do this when we get together for our regional priest meeting and stuff. We read the gospel and then we say, okay, what did you get? What, what were you seeing? And it might be amazing what the, the kids, you know, pick out. So there's something you can do as a family as well, okay? So uh, there's some good ideas for you as you go forward. Um, it's been good to be with you tonight. I wasn't sure I was going to do a show, I, but I'm like, you know what? I got to be with the people. And uh, you're, you're the people now. So this will be available on Facebook as soon as I'm done here and you can share it all over the place. Um, also, it's on the St. Patrick Facebook page, St. Patrick KCK. It's on the Sean the Baptist Facebook page, which is uh, Sean the Baptist. You can search for it, or it's Father Sean Tunic. And of course, all this is linkable on SeanTheBaptist.org, my main website. And I will have my homily for this weekend up there. I'm going to talk about Lazarus and the fact that he stunk, or at least they thought he would.
So don't miss that. Uh, tomorrow we'll have the Sean the Baptist show live at 6.30. The homily will be up there uh, sometime after I do Mass at some point tomorrow. It's all a little crazy. Uh, it's Sunday, and there's going to be nobody at church. So let's keep each other close as we do that because uh, we all need each other, and uh, we can't come to our church. But although we are socially distant, that does not mean that we have an excuse to be spiritually distant, and we need to keep in touch with our brothers and sisters. So this is my way of doing that. And I thank you for joining me. This has been the Sean the Baptist show for March 28th, Saturday, in the second week of pandemic time. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, St. John the Baptist. Pray for us. Good night, everybody.